If you're battling a powder post beetle infestation, then what I found in this video was that making a kiln to heat up the wood to 136 degrees on the outside, 104 degrees on the inside of the log, was enough to kill a lot of the beetles. However, I also found that this insecticide from Walmart, it's not labeled saying that it does anything about powder post beetles, but I tried it anyway because it said Japanese beetles and it worked like a charm. I sprayed it on there. I sprayed it enough to where it got kind of sudsy because um, you hooked the garden hose up to it and I didn't want to go lightly. I had it quite a bit so I figured I'd go enough to where I saw the little suds kind of bubbling up. And then I rolled the logs over and did it again. And 12 hours later, all the beaters are coming out and dying. So that was pretty good. And here's how I found that out. much better. All this wood that I stacked up, it's a learning experience about parasites. Annoying. I hope they won't get into my workshop.
find myself getting paranoid, but every little bug because there's a lot of damage that's just all, all of a sudden popped up. It was difficult to see in the forest. Well guys, I uh, got some insecticide and sprayed all of the logs, moved them away from the workshop, and unfortunately it looks like that 800 watt heating element isn't quite strong enough. So this is a thermocouple that I added on the outside of the log, 135 degrees. This is a thermocouple on the inside, it's 90 degrees, before it was 104. So it's obvious that it has, um, it needs more insulation. And it has used 4.41 kilowatt hours. So it's not too bad. Now hopefully that can actually, hopefully it actually killed something. But the thermocouples were on this side, inside the log and leading on the log. It's obviously very warm. Hope I didn't kill that uh, oven thing. Ooh, yeah, it's hot. Holy shit. <sighs> so now, let's see about if I can sneak this in here. I might have gotten it up to the 150 degrees that I needed. So. So it may have worked. So you see that the holes aren't, uh, you see the little black spots? Those are little beetles that are like half hmm. dead. Yeah, like a, uh, let's see. Here's one that's sticking out. But where the holes are. I'm fine if my uh, mallets have holes in them. I just don't want them to have bugs in the holes, you know? Yeah, well, the holes you can fill in. We got some more over here. Awesome. That stuff wasn't even designed to work for this. I wish I would have filmed it, but um, the stuff I used was this Bio Advanced Insect Disease and Mite Control. It doesn't say Powder Post Beetle, but it does say Japanese Beetles. So we figured it was worth a gamble, and I guess it paid off. There were a lot of ants here, but I mean, I'm fine with ants. You know, hands aren't that bad. I'll have to remove the bark to fully see that one. But yeah. And that was quick too, only like eight hours. None of these holes have been refilled. So it's obvious that all of these holes, the beetles have died. And uh, I bet most of them have fallen out. So imagine that stuff probably soaked in quite well. You can see those beetles barely even got out. Yeah, there's one. Very dead. Just the way I like them. Dead. But <clears throat> but now let's work on this. So last night it got up to 100, like 104 degrees on the inside of the log on the far end away from the heating element and then it got to 136 or so on the outside. I need more insulation. Amazingly no cracks. Okay, a few cracks, yeah. But cracks are acceptable if it means killing the beetles. So that's where I had that one. It's drying out really well though. I'm happy with that. A few bugs came out, a few beetles. Seems like this is definitely hard enough. It has cracked, but with my um, metal banding method that I'm going to be employing, cracks shouldn't matter for the mallets. 
because I'm going to design them now to where the oak mallets will work even if they crack and so even if it's like a bundle of pieces of wood hopefully the metal will keep it connected and last night when I checked on it there was a lot of liquid pouring out of here you can see it's just been dripping down and the inside is all wet that's all moisture from the logs I may want to use the remainder of my um, spray stuff the insecticide on this but I'm going to monitor this stuff and see if we find any more bugs crawling about and look at that it's like sap coming out through pores this bark's all nice and powdery now. Well, it's like the inner layer of the bark. Looks like he's dying. Have my little portable burner here. Gonna burn some of these uh, pieces of bark because I think a lot of it might ha might still have little creepy crawlies still in it. And I have a pile of two by fours a little too close to my burn pit to really burn these good. Well, that's funny. I'm starting to denail this lumber so I can put it into my lumber shed, and it's deciding to burn now. So maybe it just needs to smolder enough to build up heat, and then I can boil off the moisture. This is a piece of a pipe that I found down at, down at St. Joe State Park. And I thought it was just too cool to let it get like buried in the sand. It was from the old lead mine. And uh, so I took it home and because I have like a little display of all the little bits and bobs, old minerals and stuff I found down there. And well, it works great for this. And I know, it, I know burning probably deteriorates the metal, but oh well. tube did pretty good burned up quite a bit of the bark but I'm going to move the rest of that to the new burn pit fire and I'm going to get all the logs and strip the bark off put the bark into the fire and just get rid of anything that's living in the bark because I do not need the bark and then I'll that'll help any more pesticides that I have to spray soak into the wood all that shit in there. It's just begging to harbor parasites and bugs and such.
along with removing all the bark, I need to remove all the rot. So I haven't seen any activity yet, and it's been two days, but I think the, uh, a good test would be for me to clean off all the sawdust around any of these holes, and then give it four days. And if I don't see any sawdust four days, then that means the bugs are all dead. And if, and if I see any come back, well, I'll spray it again. But I definitely did take care of a lot of them. And then I'm going to put the date on these. May 23rd. So then on May 27th, when SpaceX is launching those uh, astronauts, then that, if there's no more sawdust coming out of these, then they're good to use. And I can put them into my green tarp shed and they can dry out for a couple months. Well, thankfully, some of this stuff's pretty easy. Seems there was a lot of beetles underneath that, too. has been one week and I'm finding no activity on any of the logs. It's been really nice. Now they are splitting because my drying experiments were interrupted, but you know, for what I'm doing, split lumber is perfectly fine by me. I'm, my mallets that I'm going to be making out of them, I'm going to be wrapping them with steel bands anyway, so whatever. So in conclusion, Heating them up to 136 degrees on the outside, 104 degrees on the inside of the log, seem to do fine. And then, in this pesticide, I came outside 12 hours after spraying this onto all the logs. I didn't think it was going to be that big of a success, that's why I didn't really film too much. But I came out and all the bugs were just dead. A few of them were still kind of coming out of the holes. Looks like they were deeper in and they took a long time to come back out. And even up until like 24 or 36 hours afterwards, there was still some bugs coming out, but they were all very, very dead. Now, regarding the drying experiment, which I do hope to um, do a video on later, where I covered the wood, it's fine. Where I didn't cover the wood, it's not fine. So I'm thinking vertically stacking with covering over it would be a good idea. This rubber seems to do a lot better than this vinyl tiling because I got this wood for free. The person that cut it up just wanted it gone. And a lot of the cuts are uneven. It allows moisture to come out. Like for instance, this one has two cuts that are kind of angled like that. And right, right where that has that air gap, it's split all the way down. But it's free oak. I don't care. Uh, I'm not that picky when it comes to this kind of stuff. If it has a split, it has a split. I imagine back in the 1600s, if something would have had a little check marks and stuff, people probably would have kept using it or whatever, because it's, it's good wood, it's, it's valuable wood, you know. But I'll just try to refine my method going forward. I would like to not spend at all anything, I would like to not spend anything at all on wood processing in the future, just having rubber mats that I put on them 
or or put wood on them because the other log that I put wood on seems to work pretty well too. But we'll we'll see how that goes. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to, di to disassemble the kiln, and I don't think I'll be using that again since this worked so well. And now I got to work on getting the bark off these logs. It's a bit annoying. Ah oh well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thank you very much for watching. See ya.